Your hormones control everything about your growth potential. At least that's what most people think. But here's what they don't tell you. Your hormones aren't set in stone by genetics. They're controlled by signals you send to your body every single day. And if you're not optimizing these signals, you're leaving inches of potential height on the table. Let me show you something fascinating. A study conducted on sprint athletes found that a single 30-second sprint increased growth hormone levels by 771%. Not 7%, not 70%, 771%. That's nearly eight times your baseline, triggered by just half a minute of maximum effort. But here's the problem. Most people have no idea how to trigger these hormonal surges. They think hormones just happen naturally, and there's nothing they can do about it. That's completely wrong. In this video, we're going to show you the exact hormone optimization system backed by science, and we'll break down the three critical hormones that control your height potential and how to maximize each one. The Hormone Hierarchy Growth isn't controlled by one hormone. It's controlled by a cascade of three master hormones working together. First, we have growth hormone, or GH. This is produced by your pituitary gland, a small organ at the base of your brain. But here's what most people get wrong. Growth hormone doesn't directly make you taller. It's actually just a messenger. When growth hormone is released into your bloodstream, it travels to your liver, and that's where the magic happens. Your liver converts growth hormone into IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor one. This is the actual hormone that tells your bones to grow longer and stronger. As you can see from this 2018 study published in the Journal of Endocrinology, IGF-1 levels directly correlate with growth plate activity. Participants with higher IGF-1 showed increased bone lengthening in their femurs and tibias. The third hormone in this cascade is testosterone, but not just regular testosterone, we're talking about DHT, dehydrotestosterone, which is a more potent form. DHT doesn't just support height growth, it also enhances bone density, muscle mass, and even facial structure. So here's the hierarchy. Growth hormone triggers IGF-1 production, which directly builds bone tissue. Testosterone and DHT support this entire process by optimizing your body's anabolic environment. If any one of these three hormones is suppressed, your growth potential is severely limited. Now that we understand the system, let's talk about how to maximize each hormone. We'll start with the most powerful trigger of all, growth hormone. Growth hormone is the foundation of your height optimization system, and the fastest way to spike it isn't through supplements or injections, it's through high-intensity exercise, specifically sprinting. Dr. Eric Berg references a study showing that sprinting can boost growth hormone by 771%. But why does this work? When you sprint at maximum intensity, you create what's called metabolic stress. Your muscles demand massive amounts of energy instantly, and your body responds by flooding your system with growth hormone to repair and adapt. Here's the exact protocol. Sprint at 100% maximum effort for 20 to 30 seconds, then rest for 90 seconds. Repeat this cycle six to eight times. That's it. The entire session takes less than 15 minutes, but it creates multiple growth hormone pulses throughout your body. Why 90 seconds of rest? Research from the University of Bath shows that growth hormone peaks during the recovery phase, not during the sprint itself. If you don't rest long enough, you'll suppress the hormone release because cortisol starts to dominate. And here's the key detail most people miss. You can do this on a bike, in a pool, or even on a rowing machine if you have knee issues. The stimulus is intensity, not the specific movement. Now, sprinting alone isn't enough. You need to time your workouts correctly to stack the benefits with your body's natural hormone cycles. Studies show that growth hormone levels are naturally higher in the late afternoon and early evening. So if you sprint between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m., you're compounding your natural peaks with the exercise-induced surge. One more thing, don't do this every day. Your body needs time to adapt. Three to four times per week is optimal. Any more than that and you risk overtraining, which actually suppresses growth hormone and spikes cortisol instead. Now let's talk about IGF-1, the hormone that actually builds your bones. Growth hormone triggers its production, but there's another powerful lever you can pull to maximize IGF-1 levels, insulin. Here's how it works. 
When you eat carbohydrates, your body breaks them down into glucose, which raises your blood sugar. To manage this, your pancreas releases insulin. And when insulin reaches your liver, it supercharges IGF-1 production. But here's where it gets interesting. Research published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology found that IGF-1 levels spike dramatically, up to 2,000% above baseline, when you consume carbohydrates after a fasting period. Why? Because during fasting, your growth hormone levels naturally rise as a survival mechanism. Your body is trying to preserve muscle and mobilize fat. Then, when you break that fast with carbohydrates, the insulin surge converts that elevated growth hormone into massive amounts of IGF-1. So here's the practical protocol. Fast for 16 hours. This means if you finish dinner at 8 p.m., you don't eat again until noon the next day. During this time, your growth hormone stays elevated. Then, when you break your fast at noon, eat a meal that contains both carbohydrates and high-quality protein. The carbs trigger the insulin IGF-1 surge, and the protein provides the amino acids your bones need to actually build new tissue. This is why the Dinka tribe from South Sudan, some of the tallest people on Earth, consume large amounts of dairy, sorghum, and meat. They're unknowingly optimizing this exact pathway. But timing isn't the only factor. There are specific nutrients that directly boost IGF-1 production. Zinc is the most important one. A meta-analysis of 33 studies found that zinc supplementation can increase height velocity by 0.4 centimeters per month. That's nearly 5 centimeters per year just from optimizing one mineral. Other key nutrients for IGF-1 include vitamin D3, which acts as a hormone precursor, and vitamin C, which supports collagen synthesis in your bones. If you're deficient in any of these, your IGF-1 production is bottlenecked, no matter how well you time your meals. The third hormone in this system is testosterone, specifically its more potent form, DHT. While growth hormone and IGF-1 are directly responsible for lengthening bones, testosterone creates the optimal environment for this growth to happen. Testosterone increases protein synthesis, which means your body can actually use the amino acids you're consuming to build new tissue. It also enhances mineral absorption, particularly calcium and magnesium, which are essential for bone density. But here's what makes DHT special. Unlike regular testosterone, DHT cannot be converted into estrogen. This is critical because estrogen is the hormone that closes your growth plates. The higher your estrogen levels, the faster your growth window shuts. But DHT keeps your androgenic environment high while keeping estrogen low. So how do you optimize testosterone and DHT? First, through specific nutrients. Zinc, which we already mentioned, is also a cofactor for the enzyme that converts testosterone into DHT. Boron is another game changer. It increases free testosterone by reducing the protein that binds to it, essentially unlocking more active hormone in your bloodstream. Next, you need to eliminate estrogen-promoting factors. This means cutting out seed oils like soybean, canola, and corn oil. Body composition. Studies show that higher body fat increases aromatase activity, which means more of your testosterone gets converted to estrogen. If you want to maximize DHT and minimize estrogen, you need to stay lean. This doesn't mean you need to be shredded, but keeping body fat below 15% for men significantly improves your hormonal environment. Now here's the part that ties everything together. Sleep. Dr. Andrew Huberman's research on circadian biology reveals something critical. 90% of your daily growth hormone production happens during the first 90 minutes of deep sleep, specifically between 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. This isn't just when you happen to be sleeping. It's a specific biological window programmed into your circadian clock. When growth hormone is released at the right time, your cells are primed to respond. They're ready to synthesize proteins, repair tissues, and build new bone mass. But if you miss that window, even if you still get eight hours of sleep, the growth hormone is being released when your cells aren't prepared to use it effectively. So here's the non-negotiable protocol. Go to sleep at the same time every night, ideally between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. This ensures you're hitting that critical growth hormone window consistently. 
Inconsistency is one of the biggest markers of poor neurological health as we age, according to multiple sleep studies. But sleep quality matters just as much as timing. Blue light exposure from screens suppresses melatonin production, which disrupts your circadian rhythm and reduces the depth of your sleep. This directly decreases growth hormone secretion. So avoid all screens for at least one hour before bed. One more thing, your room needs to be completely dark. Even small amounts of light can suppress melatonin and shift your circadian rhythm. So let's bring this all together into one actionable system you can start today. First, the sprint protocol. Three to four times per week, between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m., perform six to eight sprints of 20 to 30 seconds at maximum effort, with 90 seconds of rest between each sprint. This will spike your growth hormone by up to 771% and create the foundation for your entire hormone cascade. Second, the insulin timing hack. Fast for 16 hours, then break your fast with a meal containing both carbohydrates and high quality protein. Make sure you're also getting adequate zinc, vitamin D3, and vitamin C daily to support IGF-1 production. Third, testosterone and DHT optimization. Supplement with zinc and boron, eliminate seed oils and xenoestrogens, and maintain a lean body composition to minimize estrogen conversion. Focus on consuming red meat, raw dairy, and nutrient-dense whole foods. Fourth, the sleep window. Go to bed between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. every single night. Avoid blue light and alcohol for at least one hour before sleep, and make sure your room is completely dark. This is the complete hormone optimization system. It's not about one magic supplement or one secret exercise. It's about orchestrating all three master hormones, growth hormone, IGF-1, and testosterone to work together in sync. Your genetics set the upper limit of your potential, but your habits determine whether you ever reach it. If you're serious about maximizing your height, grab the ultimate guide to grow taller by Beyond Genetics. It contains the complete implementation protocols, meal plans, and troubleshooting guides to help you unlock every inch of your potential. And as always, go beyond genetics.